Hi, I'm Sylvie Blee Goldman with Confluent, and we're going to talk about joins. Kafka Streams offers join operations. Now, these are things you might use to join two or more streams together into a third stream or table, as we'll get into. Uh, Kafka Stream joins require that the records being joined have the same key. So two events with unrelated keys are likely to be unrelated and thus will not be joined. Whereas a join might be something like customer purchases being matched with customer addresses and producing an output stream of the full information set that you have about a customer. Now, you wouldn't want to join one customer's data with that of another customer. That's why joins are useful when they have the same key. Now, Kafka Streams offers three types of joins. First, there is the stream stream join. In this case, you would have two event streams which are being joined into a new event stream. Now, a stream stream join is what's called a windowed join. The records that arrive are joined with other records of that same key within a defined window of time. So record comes in from side, the left side. It will be joined only with records from the right side if they are within this defined window of time, uh, either in, in the forward direction or in the back. And all this data is stored in a local state store to keep track of what data has arrived during this time. Now, it's possible to change the value type, or you can produce uh, the same value type. The join can be anything that you want, as long as the uh, keys are the same. And the keys themselves are only going to be available in read-only mode, so that they can be used to compute the new value, but you can't modify them since they are, of course, essential for how you join this data. So the second type of join that Kafka Streams offers is the stream table join. Now, the stream table join is not windowed like the stream stream join was, which means that anytime you get an event from the stream side, it's going to be joined with whatever the latest value for the table is, and that will be producing the output record. And this makes sense because the table, of course, is only representing the latest value for a record, whereas the stream is an actual individual event. And within the stream table join, there's actually two different types of joins. There's the k-stream, k-table join, which is just the normal join based on uh, whatever data there is for that key in that partition. And there's also a k-stream global k-table join. So as we covered earlier, global k-table is a little bit different. It's generally a, a static table of information like the mapping of addresses to country codes or zip codes or something like that, something that doesn't really change. Now, you can enrich that data in your k-stream with the information in a global k-table, and that is when a k-stream global k-table join is useful. Lastly, the third type of join that Kafka Streams offers is the table table join. So again, the table table join, like the stream table join, is not windowed. And unlike the previous two join types, the table table join is going to result in another table. So unlike the kstream kstream or kstream ktable joins, the table is only ever dealing with table records, which are updates. They reflect the latest value of this event or this record with that key. And thus, the output of this table table join, it makes sense that it would only be reflecting uh, also a table which represents the latest value for these keys. So digging a little bit deeper, uh, within each join type that Kafka offers, there's a few different types of join. There is the inner join, the outer join, and the left outer. These might be familiar from other database type operations. Uh, the inner join is available on the stream stream join. And it basically means only produce an output record if both sides had a record available within that defined window. So when a record comes in on the left side for a stream stream join, it would look up in the state store for the right side, whether there's another record already within that window. If so, it's joined together and results in an output. And if not, nothing is output. Now, likewise, the same would happen if a record came in on the right side. So that's an inner join. An outer join is really the opposite, where both sides will always produce an output record no matter what is happening on the other side. So if something comes in on the left side and there is already a record on the right side, then these will be joined and output as usual. But if the left side produces a record and there is no matching record with that key on the right side, then you're still going to get an output. It's just going to be the left value plus null. And likewise, if you get a, an input value on the right side and there's no matching record on the left, then you get null plus the right value in your output record. Now, lastly, there's a left outer join. This is kind of the 
in between of the inner and the outer join, where only the left side will always produce an output record. Now, the left side is just arbitrary, so you can decide which stream goes on the left and which stream goes on the right. That's just a matter of semantics that you defined. But the join itself is only going to produce an output if the left side has a value. So if a left record comes in, regardless of whether or not there is a matching value on the right side, an output will be produced. Whereas if an event comes in on the right side, there is only going to be an output produced if something matches on the left side. Now, next we have a stream table join. Um, the stream table join only defines an inner and a left outer join. There's no fully outer join on the stream table join. It's also non-windowed as we discussed before. And this means that only the stream side really drives the join. So only when new records come in on the stream side do we get output. And this is why there's only a left outer or an inner join. It just does not make sense for a new record to be output if you only get a new record from the right side. Now, all this applies to both the K table and the global K table joins. Um, but the global K table provides a mechanism for determining the join key from the stream side key and or value. So the global K table is useful because you don't actually have to make sure that the keys are matched ahead of time. You can actually just look up for any key that you want in the, glo in the global K table and join that with the stream side key or event. And one final key difference between the normal K table and the global K table join is that global K tables are bootstrapped, which means that you read all of the events from the topic as soon as they occur into the global K table. Whereas with the K table, the events and the join itself is timestamp driven. So events in the K table with a higher timestamp than events in the K stream are not going to be joined with those earlier events. They really are only applied to the K table uh, once time has advanced to that point. Whereas with the global K table, everything is considered to be just static information and thus the global K table, all information will be bootstrapped in ahead of time. So the join semantics are a little bit different there. That's what a join is. Now let's go through some examples. So to define a stream stream join, you need to have both a left stream and a right stream. So you would use your builder from before to create a stream from topic A and a stream from topic B. Now before you join them, you need to create what's called a value joiner. And as the name suggests, this just tells you how do you combine the left value and the right value into the value of the output? So you can create this just like any other. Uh, in this case, you would have just some string and you would append the left and the right values together. And that is your value joiner, which just defines what the join itself is. And to do the actual join, then you just pass in the value joiner. And then to do the join itself, you just call join on one of the streams, the left one, whichever that one is chosen to be. And then you pass in the other stream, pass in the value joiner, and lastly, you pass in this join windows. So what are the join windows? This is just how do you define what that window duration is for the stream? This is the amount of time that two events can differ between the left side and the right side for them to still be matched in this join. In this case, this would be a duration of 10 seconds. So that's joins in Kafka streams. Now let's check out an example in this exercise. Mm -hmm. 